My name is Joseph Kreps. I'm a DUI defense attorney in the state of Alabama. The purpose of this video is to go through the instructions that you were supposed to have received from the arresting officer as the officer goes through the walk and turn test, which is one of the three in the standardized field sobriety test battery. It is very important that, that you understand what instructions you should have been given and the cues or clues that the officer is looking for because that helps you to determine if the tests were administered, instructed, and performed in the standardized manner. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration manual that the officers are trained under is very clear and indicates that the validity of the tests are, is compromised in the event they're not performed and administered pursuant to the standardized manner. The reason that is important is if an arrest decision was made on field sobriety tests that were not performed pursuant to the standardized manner, the instructions were not pursuant to the standardized manner, the clues were not calculated based on the standardized manner, then the argument is if the arrest decision was made based on those, and it almost always is, that the arrest was improper and illegal and that there was not proper probable cause in order to actually make the arrest. For the walk and turn test, the officer is supposed to tell you initially to put your left foot on the imaginary line that you are imagining and then put your right foot on the line ahead of your left. The officer is also supposed to demonstrate this and instruct you to keep your arms at your side. It's very important that you go back and remember and walk through these instructions and provide them to us as we move through this analysis of your case. Uh, the second instruction that the officer is supposed to give you is to tell you not to start until the officer tells you to do so. Now it's very important that you understand this because the officer is certainly keeping track of how many times you start prior to being instructed to start and is keeping track of any errors that you make. The officer should then ask you if you understand the test. Do you understand the instructions so far? And you must have responded affirmatively because if not, then the officer should go back and re-explain or find out what it is that you are confused about. Um, the officer is then supposed to tell you that, that when they instruct you to do so, you're supposed to take nine heel-to-toe steps on the line. The officer is supposed to demonstrate that for you as well. The officer then is supposed to tell you that you're supposed to turn around, keeping one foot on the line, and taking a series of small steps as you turn around to your left and return nine steps back. The officer will tell you when you turn on the ninth step that you're supposed to keep your front foot on the line. It's very important that the officer instructs properly because they're going to score you and they're going to, they're going to indicate a cue or a clue if you are not able to perform the turn. You're supposed to keep your front foot on the line and turn, taking a series of small steps with the other foot. It's very important that this is demonstrated properly and the officer is supposed to demonstrate it and then instruct you to take the nine heel to toe steps back down the line. The officer is supposed to also tell you to keep your arms at your side at all times, to watch your feet. That's very important as well and also to count each step out loud. And the officer is also supposed to tell you that once the walking begins, you're not supposed to stop until you've completed the test. At that point in time, after all the instructions have been given, the officer will ask you, do you understand the instructions? At that point in time, if you would have had any questions or, or do have any questions, you would ask the officer to repeat or clarify any issues that you have questions about the officer will then tell you, you may begin. At any point in time, the officers are trained that at any point in time, if a suspect, a, an arrestee, 
a defendant, a client of ours, does not understand some part of the instructions, the officer should go back and repeat only those instructions which the subject or suspect doesn't understand. So that's important. So remember, it's important that you provide to us a proper listing of everything because there may not be a video. We need to know in detail what instructions you were provided, uh, how well you understood the instructions, were you uh, given the opportunity to ask questions. All of those things become very important as we move through the litigation of your case. Now the clues or the cues that the officer is looking for are these. If you could not keep your balance while listening to the instructions. Now, you ought to try this. Stand on a line and put your left foot on the line and put your right foot in front of the line. Keep your hands to your side and just try to stand there for some period of time. It would probably take the officer 45 to a minute and a half, maybe two minutes to, to go over and explain everything and demonstrate it. That's a long time. So just remember, if you can't keep your balance while you're listening to those instructions, you're going to be counted against for that. And it's very important that you understand that. The other one is starts too soon. It is very rare that there is a situation where a person does not start too soon. It's just human nature. that They're nervous. They want to start. And, and so most of the time, so if you lost your balance while listening to the instructions, standing in that awkward position, and you started too soon, Technically, you've already failed the field sobriety test before you even start walking down the line. So you can see how these things are skewed in their scoring to count against the person who's actually performing the test. The other uh, clues or cues would be stop, stops walking in order to catch your balance, to steady yourself. Uh, if you were ever to pause as you walk down the line, whether going down or coming back. If you missed heel to toe, there is some leeway there, but most officers don't allow it. Steps off the line. If you step off the line, that's a clue. If you use your arms for balance, then that is a clue. Although the rules, the uh, manual indicates you can raise your arms uh, six inches. So if you raise your arms over six inches to gain your balance. The other one is an improper turn. If you lost your balance while turning, uh, if you staggered or stumbled or you turned the, uh, the way opposite that that the officer instructed. Now, so it's very important that we understand from you and hopefully from a video how the officer instructed the test because if the officer showed you incorrectly how to do the turn, then it's very important for us to know that because the officer is going to count that against you. And if the officer instructed you incorrectly and then counted it against you, it's important for us to know that. Also, if you took the incorrect number of steps, uh, or if you couldn't do the test, then obviously the officer would abort the test. That's not necessarily a clue or a cue. Uh, the officer would just make a note of that. As you can see, the instructions on the walk and turn and the clues or cues that the officer is looking for can be complicated. Uh, they can can become very detailed. And it's important that we understand from you the exact instructions and the exact process that the officer took when you were subjected to these tests on the side of the road. My name is Joseph Kreps. I'm an Alabama DUI defense attorney. If you have been charged with driving under the influence in any court in the state of Alabama, we want to talk to you. It doesn't cost you anything to speak to us initially. We'll go through the evaluation of your case with you, talk to you about what we can do to help you, and we'll provide you with, other, with whatever amount of information you want about us in making the decision to hire us. All you have to do to begin the conversation with us is call our office. You can reach us at 866-348-2889. You can also visit our website, alabamadui-attorney.com. That's alabamadui, the symbol dash, attorney.com. Thank you very much.